Well, on average, uh, the difference between the bankers that the general public talk about and the bankers that we represent are twofold. One is that the bankers we represent are generally low-paid clerical workers, although we represent managerial grades. In the main, those managerial grades will earn less than £30,000 and your average clerical worker in the banks earn anywhere between twelve and £20,000. What the public perception is, and that's what the media perception is, is that they're all at least six and seven, seven figure sum salaries and we refer to them as our executives and that's where the difference lies. The, the majority of our members are women and the frontline staff, so they're the ones that are behind the counter when you go into the bank. Um, a lot of our members aren't getting huge bonuses. Um, everybody gets a bonus, but the bonus at the, the bottom end of the scale is, is really necessary for topping up wages because sometimes the wages can be as low as 13,000. Um, and they may get £500 to help them out over, over Christmas. So that and that really upsets our members that that doesn't come across. All that comes across is that bankers are really greedy and everyone's on these big fat salaries and bonuses, which of course isn't true. I think that my members in the RBS and across the finance sector have taken a huge hit. For example, the two banks that were bailed out with public money, the Royal Bank of Scotland and Lloyds Banking Group, collectively between them have shed somewhere in the region of 45,000 jobs to date and still more to come. To be fair, they're, they're, they sympathise and empathise with the public perception because they've been at the sharp end and the raw end of pay deals for a number of years. That said, our members have been performance managed by the public the media in particular, since this crisis started, and the constant use of the word bankers actually feels uh, uh, like a wound to them. But they do accept and continue to fight against the high bonuses and the high salaries and the total remuneration packages that these executives have got. Because the reality is, it is them with their speculation and sheer damn greed that's created this crisis in the first place. The average employee in the finance sector is quite sickened by the fact that, you know, as you say, they, 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 they've gone back to getting their big bonuses and they've gone back to, to making a fortune on, 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 their, on their huge salaries and the banks are going back to making you know these get around big profits. But people at the bottom of the tree are still getting a hard time and people at the bottom of the tree are still getting getting uh, horribly treated, they're still getting managed out of the business for allegedly poor performance, they're still getting managed out of the business if they happen to fall ill. Uh, so yeah, there is a, there is a real feeling of um, of of, of um, grief about this. Not just because the banks have returned to profit and they've continued to return to make the, the return to making the bonuses, but they've shown no contrition at all about their role and, and what they've done. They've shown no um, they've accepted no blame for the problem. They've accepted no responsibility for the problem. In fact, almost the in fact the reverse. They're completely there's a, there's a real sense of arrogance um, from from these chief executives. And the people at the shop floor can see this, and the people at the shop floor are really are, are quite unhappy about this. Uh, and what it, what it does give you as well, though, is it means that, that, that there's no longer this... Uh, it, it used to be that it was, a, it was a good thing to work for a bank or an insurance company, you know, something they aspired to do, and that's, that's not there anymore. People are embarrassed to work for the Bank of Scotland or the Royal Bank. You know, it, you know, it's no longer a job to aspire to. You know, they've, they've completely wrecked that. And it wasn't the majority of workers that caused the crisis in the first place. It was, uh, you know, these elite at the top who um, were engaging in dysfunctional behaviours. Well, Unite supports the financial transaction tax campaign because initially and fundamentally it enables us to take back some of the money for those that caused the risk. For those that caused the risk and caused the problem, they've felt no pain whatsoever. So at least the organisation can then start to pay something back on each transaction that will go into the economy and repair the damage that they have done.